In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to protect your pension in a rising tax rate environment. Most experts agree that tax rates are going to rise dramatically within the next 10 years due to massively unfunded obligations like Social Security and Medicare. Former Comptroller General of the federal government, David Walker, has even said that tax rates will have to double by 2030 to keep our country out of bankruptcy. So given this impending rise in tax rates, how do you protect a taxable stream of income like a pension? After all, the pre-tax amount of your pension may be guaranteed, but the after-tax amount is not. Well, the first thing you have to do is see if your pension has a lump sum distribution option. This would allow you to roll the lump sum value of that pension into an IRA. Once it's in an IRA, you can execute a Roth conversion in order to shield those dollars from the impact of higher taxes. You will pay taxes, but you'll do so at historically low tax rates. Remember, you want to do that conversion slowly enough that you don't rise into a tax bracket that gives you heartburn, but you want to do it quickly enough that you get all the heavy lifting done before tax rates go up for good. But what happens if you've already elected your pension payment option or your company doesn't offer a lump sum distribution alternative? At this point, my best advice is simply this you worry about the things you can control and you don't worry about the things that you can't. So what exactly do you still have control over at this point? Well, you still have control over all your other tax deferred retirement accounts. I'm talking your 401k, your 403b, your IRA, etc. Those are all tax deferred retirement accounts where you have essentially entered into a business partnership with the IRS and every year that goes by, they get to vote on what percentage of your profits they get to keep. Not a very good business partnership if you ask me. So you could have a million dollars in those accounts, but unless you can accurately predict what tax rates are going to be in the year you take that money out, do you really know how much money you have? The answer, of course, is no, and it's pretty hard to plan for retirement if you don't know how much money you have. So how do you protect those tax-deferred retirement accounts from the impact of rising tax rates, particularly if you have a taxable pension? Well, you need to systematically reposition those non-pension assets to your tax-free bucket. Let me illustrate with an example. Let's say Mr. and Mrs. Jones are in the 22% marginal tax bracket and have $500,000 in their cumulative IRAs. Let's also say Mr. Jones is already receiving a $72,000 annual pension. Additionally, they're receiving $45,000 of Social Security. Well, Mr. Jones's $72,000 pension counts as provisional income, as does half of their $45,000 Social Security. What's provisional income? That's the income the IRS tracks to determine if they're going to tax your Social Security. With all this provisional income, Mr. and Mrs. Jones can expect 85% of their Social Security to be taxed at their highest marginal tax bracket. So what will their taxable income look like before they can even take dollar one from that $500,000 IRA? Let's break it down. Mr. Jones's $72,000 pension is 100% taxable. 85% of their $45,000 Social Security payment is now also taxable. So add another $38,250 of taxable income. That gets us to $110,250 of gross income. Subtract $25,900 for their standard deduction, and that gets them to net taxable income of $84,350. So that means that Mr. Jones's pension and the taxable portion of their Social Security will completely consume their 10 and 12% tax brackets. Now, when they take money out of that $500,000 IRA, at what rate will it be taxed? Well, it's gonna land right on top of all their other income. So best case scenario is 22%. In other words, at this point, they only own 78% of that $500,000 IRA. I repeat, that's a best case scenario. And what happens to that 22% tax bracket in 2026? It reverts back to the 25% tax bracket. And if what David Walker says comes true and tax rates have to double to keep our country solvent, then that 25% could easily become 50% by 2030. So what does all this mean for Mr. and Mrs. Jones? Well, because they're currently in the 22% tax bracket, then not a year should go by where they aren't Roth converting to the top of that 22% tax bracket. Remember, come 2026, that 22% tax bracket will be gone forever. 
Now, if Mr. and Mrs. Jones really want to get serious about protecting that IRA, then they should take a strong look at converting to the top of their 24% tax bracket. Why? Because it's only 2% more than the 22% tax bracket, and it allows them to convert an extra $161,950 per year. Plus, the 24% tax bracket is still less than the future version of the 22% tax bracket, which is 25%. So what does all this mean for you? It means that you should feel a huge sense of urgency to get your tax deferred assets shifted to tax free between now and 2026, particularly if you are in the 22% tax bracket and particularly if you have a pension. In summary, if you have a pension where you have yet to elect your payment option, see if you have a lump sum distribution alternative. If so, it may make sense to roll that pension into your IRA and systematically reposition it to tax free. If you don't have a lump sum payment alternative or you've already elected your pension payment option, then you should get serious about doing a Roth conversion starting in 2022. Remember, if you wait until 2023, you'll only have three years to get your money shifted to tax-free before tax rates go up for good. And that increases the likelihood that you'll bump up into a tax bracket that gives you heartburn along the way. If you want a good review of this discussion, check out chapter eight of my best-selling book, The Power of Zero. If you need some help executing your Roth conversion between now and 2026, head on over to davidmcknight.com. I'm happy to lend a hand. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. I'll respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.